Hello and welcome. This is Alter Element Games at Twitch.tv. My name is Jordan Fleming, aka Alter Element, and welcome to a second episode of Pixel Bitchin' Podcast. Woo! Ain't that a bitch? Mm, 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 mm. Yep, yep, yep. Jesus Christ. Uh, What's going I'm on, Xavier. guys? I'm Xavier, aka Nomad Zero X, co host with Jordan here. All right, cool, cool. My man Mark, go ahead and introduce yourself. How's it going? going? Jesus Christ. Okay, you can tell that he he doesn't know how the podcast works. I'm going to move on. My man, if you see here, (laughs) uh, (laughs) on the actual stream, our fourth guest. Trying to work out me and my brother's shit, so. Exactly, exactly. Our fourth guest, chilling with this war turtle over here, is my man, Pan Cheesy, YouTuber and local friend. How you been, yeah. brother? I've been good, man. How about you? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Just uh, love doing these podcasts and just catching up with friends. How you been, brother? I've been good, dude. Doing the same podcast as well. So. Oh, small world, baby. Small world. <laughs> and if you guys look here on stream, I got this man's YouTube channel, Pan Cheesy, on YouTube. Shit. Look at the lovely. He has videos ranging from you know, <laughs> you know. Uh, bo- uh, unboxing, uh, posing ain't easy, you know, uh, a figurine. Uh, I- I'm probably not even doing this justice. Go ahead and explain what you do on YouTube, my man. Alright, word. I'm a full-blown adult male that plays with children's toys, photographs <laughs> them, makes them look dope. Uh, <laughs> I, talk about, I talk about video games, extremely enthusiastic about Dragon Ball. Mm-hmm. It's basically nice. <laughs> More developed than the rest of us. I got it. Fine. Yeah, he does. He does really, really good work, man. You know what? I'm gonna I'm actually play one of the videos. Look, 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 look at this handsome man right here. Oh my gosh. He's like, yo, welcome to the first episode. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm gonna skip through. Look, look, look at the posing. Look at Broly. Look at Goku. Mm, the scenes. <laughs> The transitions? Jesus Christ. Somebody stop this man. Oh God, please, somebody stop me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. And then we have um, Mark's brother here, a.k.a. J. Pike. What's going on, man? <laughs> apparently, apparently nothing is going on. I have to hold the button down. Yeah, you do. You do. <laughs> hey, man. I'm just wondering how this goes. Okay, okay. It's all good. It's all good. All right, guys. So first up, our first topic. Uh, if you if you are new to the stream, we talk about pop culture, music, uh, video games, movies, um, comic movies, books, comic books, anime. yeah, tech, everything, dude. So whatever we feel like it. But we're gonna keep this podcast a little bit shorter because. I have some things to do tomorrow, a, a busy weekend, all weekend. So we're going to do this for about 30 minutes to an hour, and then just have our uh, f- final thoughts at the end. So f- first up, I'm going to do a little promo over here, as you guys can see. Uh, Downright Fierce 12 here in Nor- uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. It's a, a local fighting game tournament that hosts uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, a little bit of Virginia and ATL when they do show up. And uh, we have Street Fighter V, Injustice 2, uh, Blaze Blue, Pokin, and Tekken Tag Tournament 2. And we're also holding uh, another tournament for Tekken 7 when that comes out. Uh, thanks to the guys at Potions and Pixels, a local uh, arcade bar slash lounge uh, event here in Charlotte, North Carolina. They help out with uh, setting up events here in the local area. Frame Zero Gaming, you can see the next picture down. Uh, they're the ones that host Downright Fierce 12. Uh, thank you so much to them for, you know, making the local scene, the fighting game scene, so hype every single weekend, every single time they do it. Set Play, uh, CLT, is where uh, veterans and newcomers can come through and learn how to play Street Fighter uh, Injustice 2. It's a, incom- it's a comfortable environment where you can just go and play video games and just learn how to play fighting games all together. Even Smash and Pokin. We'll, we'll accept 
some poking fans over here. You know, don't be afraid. Not too shy. And my, <laughs> don't be too shy. And then my channel, aka Alter Element Games, where gameplay is everything. You can see me. Uh, you can see me on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. All right. So going back to the scenes over here, our first topic: Have you guys heard of Arms for the Nintendo Switch? I have. I don't know too much about it. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to be enlightened. I oh. heard it's a religious experience, almost. <laughs> okay, uh, Mark and uh, Mark and Bro, uh, have you heard of Arms? <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and say no. I have not heard about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh okay okay so if you guys uh, are watching the stream right now I have currently have uh, arms the website it's a basically a new fighting game for the Nintendo switch that uses uh, motion controls or you can use the actual controller whatever you know fits your fancy basically your characters have stretchable arms to use in combat you can twist them you can curve them like those wanted bullets in that movie with the Angelina Jolie, and <laughs> oh yeah, that movie is sick. Hey, bro, don't, bro, that's the diamond in the rough. Nah, don't bring that movie. In. Nah, don't bring that movie. In. Oh my god. Anyway, yeah. So it, uh, it's basically um, a today or this weekend is the lo local, um, is the global test punch, right, Pancho? Yes, sir. All right. So basically, they have like a, a beta that's out to test the the net code and online. It's been some mixed reviews. Some people have like had no problems with it. Other people had disconnections and a couple of lag here and there. What are your thoughts on it, uh, Pancho? Uh, yeah, I think it's dope, man. Uh, I I was in the test fire. A true Nintendo fair, man. These these cats just can't do a all weekend long test fire and mm -hmm. just let the chips fall where they may. They got to do it for like set schedule. So eight o'clock was the first uh, what they call the first round. Mm -hmm. uh, eight o'clock Eastern uh, Standard Time, and it lasted from eight to nine. It was an hour. It was really cool. Uh, they drop you in and they give you like a bit of a tutorial to give you like an idea of the controls, and they just throw you into like online um, matchmaking. And you know what? For the for the most part, in terms of the netcode and stuff, it was great. Like I did, I only disconnected twice. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more. It's a lot better than I can say for Mario Kart, a game that's actually shipped already. Where Ooh. I disconnect like, all the time. It yeah. Sucks. <laughs> Damn. But uh, for arms, especially, uh, and I think they really emphasize and prioritize that because it's a fighting game. Mm -hmm. Like I, I only disconnected twice. Um, okay. And my switch is like at the furthest point of my apartment from my Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and in terms of lag, I didn't really experience lag until like one of the last matches. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's because a new a, somebody joined the lobby, like a new person joined the lobby or something, and that was also at the very end of the test fire. So that could have meant that um, like people were coming into the very last round. Possibly that was like the very last round where I experienced lag. So, oh, okay. All right. It was so, great. Man. So, what do you think of the actual mechanics? Because a lot of us didn't have the opportunity to play the game. Um, mm -hmm. I saw that in a couple of videos. I'm playing a video right now on a stream, kind of in a low resolution. But uh, you can turn, you can twist, you can jump, you can dash midair or on the ground. There's also like um, modifiers to each hand. Uh, yeah, it's pretty dope, man. Like, so um, you can choose from a loadout. Uh, of three separate like arms that you can choose, and each arm, like mo each modified arm, does has different like speed and damage boosts and perks and stuff like that. Um, as you can see, like the green dude on the left, like his one of his signature arms on his left arm will like block other people's arms coming at you, mm -hmm. uh, and then the girl on the right, her left arm when it comes to the very end it'll stop and then it'll shoot a beam so like there's a very much like a, a lot of nintendo stuff there's a huge diverse cast and there's a bunch of different like weird powers that they have and it makes for a lot of really cool opportunities in a fighting game i think so mm, okay so the way the game controls is think of like z targeting so you're constantly z targeted to your opponent mm -hmm. uh, so there's not really any camera control 
Uh, I will say that when there's when there's more than two people, you can you can change your target. So it's not like um, you're just constantly stuck targeted on one person the entire time. So if there's three or four people, you can change your target, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, and I I heard that a lot of people didn't really know that as well, which is kind of sucked. <laughs> <In that sense. laughs> because a lot of people weren't like changing targets or test fire. Um, but yeah, you, like you said, you can jump, you can dash, and stuff like that. And then different characters have different attributes. Some characters can uh, do multiple dashes. Some people can do multiple jumps. Some people can like hover. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of really there's a lot of really good mix up in terms of uh, mobility and like agility and stuff like that in the game. And um, it just seems like when it came to like the core fundamentals of what makes like an actual like super fun and great to play fighting game like they really focused on that kind of stuff so yeah. it's a really good start yeah that sounds that sounds awesome now do they illustrate how to play the game and like uh they show you and like different button prompts or does is it just like you you go into training just for a little bit or you have like a super smash brothers kind of like lobby where you train before you fight or anything like that because i think i've seen that on your stream yeah it's interesting so like um the controls are like super easy I'll, I'll touch on that in a second like the way you can what you can do is if you're in an online match um they stick you in a big lobby mm -hmm. uh, with i think like maybe six or six or eight different people i think it's eight mm -hmm. but um within that lobby there will either be two matches going on at a time or three matches going on at a time and while you're not involved in a match um you can just either like just chill and do whatever or you can very quickly in the same like screen uh, like a window will pop up and then you can like practice with like test dummies and stuff that's really cool mm -hmm. um and in terms of the controls it's like super simple controls man like uh I, I feel like this game was developed for like a very like it was developed as a motion game so a lot of people i imagine were using the motion controls I jumped straight into pro control, like the pro controller, because I spent I spent eighty dollars on that stupid controller, so I'm gonna use it at every chance. I get. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll talk about that soon, because that price is kind of high for a yeah, controller. Yeah, that is ridiculous. Yeah, that... it's nuts. But I will say really quickly, it's it's probably one of the most comfortable controls ever used. Mm -hmm. Period. Um, but the controls are super simple. So left trigger uh, punches with your left hand and then right trigger punches with your right hand. Mm -hmm. uh, you dash with um, you dash with Y. No, you jump with Y and you dash with X. And then you can change your target by flicking the right thumbstick left and right. And then the block, which is probably the weirdest, um, the weirdest button layout, is you click the left thumbstick in, which I think is ridiculous. Ooh, that's, <laughs> that's bad. It's really weird. Hopefully, when the when the game ships, you can you can map it to something else. Yeah, I, I would prefer it to be like maybe cross the sticks together, or like maybe like, you know, yeah, just like a single button input or something like that. Or yeah, it's interesting you mentioned crossing the sticks because the uh, the motion gesture for for guarding is just tilting the controllers towards each other like a like a X guard. So oh okay, um, for the most part, like. The, but the controller layout in terms of controls is pretty straightforward, really easy. It's like you're not really doing a lot of complicated, like, my problem uh, inputs and stuff. Well, what's going on? My problem with, like, fighter games is just memorizing the absolutely perfect button mashing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I will say the very interesting thing about ARMS is, like, so... The core mechanic is like really judging the distance between you and your opponent, mm -hmm. and then when you when you throw your punch, it's not just like one and done. You can like alter the trajectory and the curve of your arm. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Is, it's super dope because like you can like set up traps, so you can like throw your right arm and like curve it. So, you're, so it's so the it's more involved like, than like you're actually like involved in the fight instead of just yeah button. exactly okay that makes sense all right so you guys are like seeing the actual a uh, action on the stream itself xavier aka nomad what do you think about the gameplay right now because you're being currently enlightened by my man poncho <laughs> over here on the actual nah. gameplay aspects what do you think about it 
it looks pretty cool. I'm kind of interested uh, where it's gonna fit in in the competitive scene, mm -hmm. and like it, it, it would be a nice change to see it something like this in the competitive scene because everything is pretty generic at this point, either like 2D side or like there's some 3D stuff, but it's there's nothing really unique lately with uh, fighting games, and it's good to see something like this. Yeah, this this like I, I really want to play this like. It's something different. It looks really cool. Mark, what do you think about it, man? Like, uh, if you can hear me all the way over there. See? See, he's all the way in the distance. I can't even hear him. <laughs> His brother's phone's working better. Exactly. His brother's phone is working way better than, like, Mark's actual computer. Yo, J Pike, what do you hey, think? Yo, you what? Know my brother knows all of this stuff, but man. <laughs> <laughs> the circle is real. I, I got the phone that's working. Yeah, and apparently his mic is just like really shut down. But okay, so um, yeah, like the Nintendo Switch, uh, I feel like has really been knocking knocking it out of the park with like these new IPs. You know what I'm saying? Like in the character designs. For like, like that's the most important thing in a fighter. You know what I'm saying? Other than like the actual gameplay, you need waifus and you need like good <laughs> character design. No question, this this game is jam packed to the brim. So yeah, I'm, I'm I'm telling you, <laughs> like it, it's it's crazy. Like I I say that I'll I'll say this right. The holy trinity for fighting games. I've said this time and time again. You need good net code, great gameplay. And waifus. You always <laughs> need the waifus, man. Because that's what people fall in love with. And they will continue to support your game. Guy, what are waifus? What are waifus? <laughs> As a normal guy. As a normal guy. What are waifus? You know what? That's a conversation in another topic that I'm probably going to have to... We need to give him a, a quick synapse. Oh, all, right, all, right, all, right, all right, all right. A waifu is pretty much like a hot 2D girl. On either a game or an animated series or something like that. Mm -hmm. That basically follows a trope of like a subgenre or whatever. So you have like, oh, the cutesy girl or the voluptuous girl or like the gothic girl or something like that. It follows like a generic trope within that anime series or like game or something like that. And it, you know, it just appeals to the fans, especially if it's like designed right. So that's why games like Persona. Fire Emblem, you know, Pokemon, they all have, like, waifu material, like, girls as, like, gym okay. leaders or, like, soldiers or something like that. It's it's everywhere, man, so... I, I get it, all right. You can get involved in. Yeah. So you, you, you have something that, like, you kind of want to be... I can be, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. I can be. Yeah. I, no, I, I, I get it, all right. Okay. It's like Dead or Alive, it's all... It's all eye candy. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I was going to say dead or alive. That, <laughs> that was exactly what I wanted to point out. Uh, uh, hmm, dead or alive, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> this has been a lot of uh, a lot of content for that one. I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, so ARMS will be coming out probably, what, later this summer, uh, Pancho? It's June or July. June or July. It is sin, dude. Okay. Okay, so it's so it's really close. So, uh, guys, if you're looking forward to this game, I'm looking forward to seeing this game at local tournaments, at um, you know, at a friend's house. I just want to, you know, play the game and see how it plays, check out the characters. There's a lot of interesting characters in this game. So, like, one of my favorites, um, of course, you know you had to go to uh, the, the, the waifu. Twintel. <laughs> Twintel, baby. Tw tw Twintel. <laughs> Boy, if this image don't show up, I'm going to be heated. <laughs> they need to show me something. All right, so this is our personal data over here to the side. There she is. Look at, oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus Christ. They dedicate a huge, yo. Yo, I saw a meme on Facebook that said, that literally had a parabola. Remember that shit back in high school? What a parabola was? <laughs> they literally used that to like... <laughs> like it's all about math. 
<laughs> you know, the <laughs> circumference of the booty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you, like, let's be real. Like, they knew what they were doing. They uh, definitely knew what they, they were doing. I have gotten better, but it's the same thing. Like, looking back at Mortal Kombat and Tekken, everybody, we, we always had those girls. Exactly, exactly. The booty is life and the booty is real. I'm going to move on <laughs> to Poncho's girl, a.k.a. Ribbon Girl. Like, I really like her because she's like a pop idol with like... A cheerleader yeah. style, like, um, like her style is like very cheerleader ish, but still like pop idol ish. <laughs> it's like an interesting yeah. mix, you know? Yeah, I was, I was hoping to like mess with Twintel during the test fire, but she wasn't, she wasn't in it. So, like, it's like the core announced characters that were in it. So, it's like, um, the dude that's hair looks like Colgate toothpaste. Oh right, right, right. <laughs> Ribbon girl, uh, the guy that uh, the copy and Naruto no Jutsu guy. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, Gumby doing the Dougie over there. The very <laughs> oh yeah, he I looks mean, like I've had bubble gum less pink than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like the characters are like. Uh, say what you can about the colors, because I love colors, like, in anything, you know? Ever since, like, the dark times of, like, early 360 and PS3 games where everything was, like, brown and gray. <laughs> you know, God, God forbid that those times. Uh, his name is his name is Springman, but yeah. There's something, there's something to be said for the brown and gray. <laughs> oh, it's my very God. very nostalgic, but we've, we've gone a long way. Well, listen, yeah. I had enough, I had enough of the gritty shit, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, put some color back into my games. And that's what I love about this game. Um, the character designs are just stupid good. Like, they're yeah. really fantastic. Like, it's crazy. You know what it is, man? It's like, it's everybody has such a distinct silhouette. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what really, that's one of the things. Silhouette and color theory in a character really help it, like, become an iconic character. Yeah. And, and that's, like, key, essential, every time designing a character. Color theory always makes a character pop. And for those who don't know what color theory is, it's basically two contrasting colors coming together that makes an image pop. So, let's say uh, a blue and orange. You see it in movie posters all the time. You see blue and orange in, like, Blade Runner or something like that, or Mad Max, Fury Road, like... That movie is blue and orange. To the max. Start, start, yeah, start to finish. Like, it, it's all about color theory in Mad Max. Like, mostly orange, and then you'll see the sky, and it's like, oh, it's another color. Oh, shit. Like, or you can go <laughs> way back to uh, Hidden Dragon, Crouching Tiger. Mm -hmm. Like, all the scenes were pretty much had, like, a specific color palette. Yeah. And, and that's... it was ridiculously, like definitely great scenes and that's what yeah. made the movie really pop out where did you see blue and gold in mad max like seriously like blue blue and orange was, now say it was all orange <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember the dark scenes with that at nighttime you know what i'm saying in the desert, in the desert the desert. it is like dark blue <laughs> Have you Legion? Have y'all watched Legion on FX? No, I haven't seen it. I've heard good things, though. Man, why some color theory go on there? <laughs> All right, definitely. Like, like, what kind of colors? Is it, like, dark blues? Is it, like... Illustrate it for me, yellow, man. Red. Blue, yellow, red. It's... Man. It is the blue. definition of, like, color theory, filmography. It's fantastic. Yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna take a look at that because a lot of people are saying that uh, Legion is really good. Uh, you want to pull up a trailer for let's Legion? Find a tra yeah, let's see. If we can... I, I mean, got her good... okay, okay. I can segue this into you know in, into Legion. <laughs> I, I can try to I can try to do that. Um, is it? Hey, so sorry to try and sidetrack you here, but no, that's cool. Like. Actually, I needed something else to segue into before we get to, like, the, the actual uh, other video games, you know? All right. Dude, you want to talk about, like, the way X-Men have been treated? Legion is the most original content 
that X-Men has ever experienced. Oh, so it is part of X-Men. Okay, that's sick. Yo, this this is kind of cool. Dude, X, X-Men has never seen something this dynamic and interesting before. Yeah, I'm liking what they're presenting here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, a couple of flashbacks here and there. Um, yo, remember that old Adams Family uh, fucking uh, arcade game? Yo, well, you had to hold on to the sticks and it would vibrate, and you had to hold on to it. Like, doesn't that remind you of it? Like during this scene right here. Hold on, like right here. Like that. That's the face. Right, that, that's the face you make when you lose. You're like, damn. I couldn't hold on to it long enough. I wanted more tickets. <laughs> there, there, you paused it. <laughs> he, he needs more tickets. <laughs> he needs more tickets. He's like, yo, I need that Pokeball. Damn. <laughs> and then you just go to Crazy Taxi and have a good time. Or like Soul Calibur 2. Oh, man. Aladdin's Castle. Good shit. Before it closed yeah, Aladdin's down. Aladdin's Castle. Jeez. Yeah, dude. Remember that shit? <laughs> yeah, man. Sky. <laughs> yeah, we're old, man. <laughs> we're getting no. old. Yeah, so I Link... don't even want to hear it, boys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to figure out this technology. I'm 33 years old talking to you guys. Mm. Dude, you're not that far off. But you're adapting, though. You're adapting. Yo, this this yo Legion looks you're, sick. You're, you're adapting better than your brother, who's not present anymore. Yeah, yeah. Your brother is in like another dimension that we can't even hear, man. Hey, I don't know I don't know what's going on with him. That... Yeah, the, the the struggle sounds all too real. Okay. So so he, he got me he got me on and now he's stuck with me. Oh no. <laughs> Alright, so uh Legion looks great. I'm probably gonna have to check that out because the only thing I really watch on FX is like Archer. And that's pretty much it. So it's <laughs> So, you know what? Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh, I'm Atlanta too. You, Atlanta too. Yeah, true, true. If you have, like, any love for the X-Men and, like, the X-Men series and who they are and, like, it's the absolutely best adaptation mm-hmm. and, like, it just, it's true to the story and, god damn, is it a good directing, filmography, everything about it is amazing. That sounds good, man. Really good. And I actually want to, like, I actually legitly want to get into, like, those TV shows. Like, oh, man, it's been so long since I, like, caught, like, a, like a full season of, like, Daredevil or, like, Luke Cage, which I still have to watch because apparently that one's pretty good. I heard I Iron... And those are going to come out soon. All right, all right, hold on. Like, you haven't even watched Daredevil or Luke Cage yet? I haven't watched season two of Daredevil. Like, I mean, come on. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, man, you got to delegate your time wisely. <laughs> you have to delegate your time wisely. All right, I so... work nine hours a day, and I still have watched all of these things. And I have a girlfriend who lives with me. Maybe she's... Oh, shit, dude. <laughs> hey, I can't even beat that. That's, that's no, yo. Yeah, he, he's got... And he's supposed to be, like, the normal guy. See that? We're not normal. We have too, yo, we have too much content to choose from. We're not the normal ones, you know? Alright, so I'm gonna, sw- uh, I'm gonna move on to Far Cry 5. Have you guys, like, seen any, like, trailers or pictures of what's going on, like, uh, for Far it's Cry very 5? Con- very controversial at the moment. Oh, yeah. Mm, uh, uh, like, what? Uh, about being in Montana? Like, <laughs> well, what's controversial no, about it? Well... Uh, there's that one picture where they're like sitting at a table mm-hmm. and stuff and there's just been a lot of people ridiculing with uh, what's going on and whatnot as far as like having Americans be like the bad guys and to me it doesn't really bother me because you know there's bad people in every society every country mm-hmm. and just because you're they're they're not representing every single person in America. They're representing the few that you know are intolerable, perhaps or whatnot. But this is a, a game about fictional characters too. Mm-hmm. So, like 
get over yourselves. We play games with Nazis, and they've done the worst. And just because we're Americans, like, this has nothing to do with it. I respect people that are in the military. I respect history and all that stuff. But why should you respect the bad people in the past? If I had, like, a bad parent that was a piece of shit, then fuck them. <laughs> I have no reason... Yes, they're my blood, but I have no reason to respect them. I have no reason to take their side. Mm -hmm. They're bad people. And I think it's ridiculous how people are getting offended with this kind of stuff. Oh, uh, because like, it's now America that's being like the true focal point of villainy. Exactly. Basically. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, from the inside out, like, yo, there's plenty of evil here. So I'm glad, like, I, if you guys are uh, catching this picture on stream it's like did, did, did the... he just compare america to nazis mm. no i'm say i'm taking extremes and saying mm. that that's kind of yeah. grasping at straws there i'm just saying i'm not comparing americans to nazis i'm saying that there's a certain point where you don't have to defend the bad from the past just because you're related to it and that's what i'm saying or, and, or you can say, let's stop using fucking Nazis all the damn time, and let's mix it up with these villains, and okay, let's have something I, different. I, 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 I get that. Mm. I understand. See, it, it's it's just mixing up a little bit, and like I love the way that Far Cry Five or the Far Cry series have like this James Bond kind of thing, where like it's a villain that pops out every fucking game you know it's some it's like a brand new character every game you know you had you had um what's his name in far cry 3 ah oh, i can't remember his name uh do you know the definition of insanity like that dude right there <laughs> that dude was sick they had pagan men in the fourth one which he had like this awesome uh secret ending in the beginning of the game that a lot of people didn't notice that was like pretty cool and like video games that pushed the line and this one like you see this man sitting like Jesus at the table and if he does not sound like this man right here from Wild Wild West if he doesn't sound like Loveless are you kidding me if he yeah. doesn't if he doesn't sound like this man I am not playing that game <laughs> like why don't y'all join me for Last Supper? Like that's what I want to hear. <laughs> I want to hear. I want to hear that. I, I want to hear that twang. I want to hear that. Oh boy! Like this. This man was the best part of the movie. Mm. I'm just playing the clip right now. Just. <laughs> oh my God. Had it up his sleeve the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts, Pawn Cheesy? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's great. Like, I think that is, it's going to get a lot of people, I wouldn't say thinking. I mean, like, I don't know. Like, I understand why people, some people are upset about it, but like, you know, let me tell you, uh, one of the scariest things that could possibly happen is finding yourself in the middle <laughs> of an insane religious cult. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 something that you don't want to be a part of. I don't care who yeah, you are. It's nuts, dude. Mm -hmm. And like, um, that has happened, you know, on American Soul so many times. So many crazy religious cults have popped up, and you know, it just it makes sense for eventually the road of video games would, would cross paths with something. But I think that it kind of has to at this point. Yeah, I think we've in terms of western developed games we've exhausted so many of our resources in terms of other countries that could serve as like the background for war and stuff like that mm -hmm. with the exception of Homefront which sucked <laughs> <laughs> not much <laughs> not no I, I completely agree with you guys on that mm -hmm. yeah I think the interesting thing is me and uh, my boss were talking about it today like there's been stuff like the division and stuff um that has taken place in America and like Watch Dogs and but like Watch Dogs is different and Watch Dogs and like Grand Theft are different because it's just like it's different. It's not. It's uh, contemporary like evil. Like it's yeah. like corporate, but like rich guy. White yeah. supremacists. 
guy <laughs> as terrorists. Like, neither one of them show white supremacists in their, like, full-fledged absolute asshole glory. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is, like, cranked to 11. It's it's nuts, man. Like, it's crazy. And, like, um, if you... <laughs> yo, if you go to Montana now, chances are this will probably happen. <laughs> <laughs> like the vision that's like post-apocalyptic and stuff I yeah like I, yeah it's it's crazy like it's it's like yeah like compared to like yeah post-apocalyptic new york which it's damn near almost there because that shit is crazy up there like fuck rent like that shit is too grand a, for a studio <laughs> i don't think so it's, but, yeah. it's getting to the point where you know big cities have been done mm-hmm. really small yeah. towns have been done Everything else is getting exhausted. You're going to get to the point where you're going to have to challenge the norm and challenge people in order to make something interesting. There's a shit ton of game studios all around the world. There's a whole bunch of independents trying to do shit. Mm -hmm. Like us. Like I I was in the game design uh, simulation class at CPCC. I'm still planning on trying to make a game eventually. I'm sure you guys are probably interested in doing the same thing. There's a point where people have to differentiate themselves from each other, and they have to. It, people are going to get tired of the same shit, and at in the end, the only thing that's going to be left untapped is all the stuff that people are afraid to tap into. Mm-hmm. That's but why. Then I... That's when everything's going to become crazy because that's all that's going to be left. And yep. everyone's gonna do it all at the same time, and we're gonna be oversaturated with all this stuff yep. that everyone was afraid to talk about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I feel like that might be the case that's coming up now because Outlast Two had that same hokey religious cult kind of thing here, based here in America, you know. And now this game is popping up, and you know, I'm still laughing at this fucking loveless picture that I have up here for like the stream. <laughs> Like this, this man is gorgeous. I'm, I'm sorry. Like this, this, this guy is, this guy is great. Like uh, you, you can't beat that. But yeah, like don't be, don't be afraid to make fun of like your country. We have the freedom to do that. Like we're not North Korea. You know, we're not ignorant. We're not like, you know, in a dictatorship. We have the right to criticize like what happens here in the social norm of America. You know. Yeah, and if you can't challenge yourself and your own ideas, then you never grow as a person exactly exactly and that's and that's that's good thing and hopefully the game the actual game is good because yeah like they, they can really <laughs> fuck it up like like let's let's be real here like all this feather talk can be like hey this this subject here but listen if the game isn't good i'm gonna talk shit about that not the actual cult and religion shit because that's just <laughs> a subject that I can cover for like five minutes and then shit on the gameplay for like an hour. Like, yo, this... Go ahead. It really depends on how they handle that too because Mm -hmm. they just given a snippet of what it might be. It could end up starting a huge shit storm that might like, you know, make them go bankrupt or something. I can see that happening. I mean, that that is interesting, but... You know, it's Ubisoft, and weirdly enough, like, they're, I heard that they're gonna merge with, um, with the uh, Activision Blizzard, so, oh, damn. that's gonna be very interesting to see, so that's gonna be another giant, sort of, merging with another giant, so you're gonna, I think, s- uh, I think Blizzard is pushing on Steam here, trying to do, like, a Battle.net Monopoly, yeah, I mean... Nah, it, they're not really putting any pressure on Steam at this point. Yeah, Steam is pretty much untouchable. Like, there's... Well, Steam is a monopoly, too. Like, I, I know a couple of other sites that are like Steam that we're starting up, but they've recently gone yeah, I mean, Steam, under lately. Like, yeah, Steam runs about everything at this point. Like, if you want to have an independent game, you want to do anything, you go through Steam. Mm-hmm. Like, it's... Like, Steam is a gateway now because it's so open. Like, you can't compete with that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rough. Like, there's alternatives like uh, G- Humble Bundle and, like, GOG. Humble Bundle is the best 
probably competition against Steam right now. Yeah, so it, it's there's a lot of you play Origin. Like Origins has gotten better, you know, because I remember when it first started, that thing was some shit, and that, it's that trash. yeah, it, it's oof. And that let's not talk about Windows. That <laughs> <laughs> the Windows Store, God. Jesus Christ, like. I, I just wanted to play some Killer Instinct, and like I had to go through oh. Rings of Fire just to download this shit. <laughs> like, god damn. Well, they are they are working on integrating next into the Windows 10. Like, if Windows 10 is supposed to be like the universal um, OS for everything Microsoft, so like your tablets, their phones, my the Zoom consoles, everything. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I, I loved Zoom. Not too long ago, and played some Diablo 2 with a I bunch of friends I still, on a LAN party. I still have nice. my Zoom. I still have it. Like, I got to sign up, download Diablo 2, and we all went to town on a LAN party. Mm -hmm. That like, sounds awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. It was amazing. Yo, LAN parties but, be the best. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you can't beat those. Yeah, I miss those days. It, it, it well, just go ahead, man. More of, those, more of those days will come, man. We will make shit happen. <laughs> we'll let you know when there's a land party. We are those happening. Oh yeah, we do. Absolutely, I'm not down. Yeah, yeah, we we do a lot of those. Oh, and Mark. Hey, oh. Mark oh, hey everybody, how you doing? <laughs> oh my God. Hey, Mark figured out. He's back. <laughs> he figured it out. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? Oh, I can't even. I can't even describe the amount of pain and effort that went into me being able to say hi. Jesus <laughs> Christ. So, okay, before we switch off, Far Cry Five. All right. How do uh, you feel about it? I'm gonna take a piss. Mark Tagger it. Oh my God. <laughs> Far Cry Five is an interesting case. Remember, this podcast is not professional. So, um, well, not this one at least. So, go ahead, Mark. God, this is my first podcast ever. I mean, Far Cry Five is an interesting case. They were talking; they did the survey, mm -hmm. well, like six months ago, where they're saying, "Hey, you want a spaghetti western?" And was like, "Yeah, cool." So now we're based in Montana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, can can they do a good game again? I don't know. I've done all the Far Cries. I've played every single one. Can they make an original game out of it? I don't know anymore. I'm waiting to see something more from them at this point. True, true. Like, we'll be, will we be climbing telephone poles like, uh, like we've been climbing towers in Assassin's Creed and the Far Cries for like the longest time? Will they have that climbing mechanic over and over again in this version of Far Cry? Do you think I mean, so? The best thing they've had is they've had interesting villains in the past. Like, Vods mm -hmm. in Far Cry 3 was amazing. The guy, can't even think of his name in Far Cry 4, but he was still a very interesting. Pagan man. So if yeah. they can recreate uh, a strong villain again, then yeah, I'm, I'm in. Sure. Yeah, like I said before, like, they have went down the road of a James Bond film with a special villain that you want to hate and you want to get back with. And like three did it well, and then four did it well with the secret ending, like with all the types of endings that you can get, which kind of like changed my perception about a Far Cry game. And then Far Cry Primal, I didn't touch that shit, so I don't even know what the fuck happens in there. So I played Primal, but yeah, it was not very. I didn't finish it, so I don't know how it ends. The reason but, why yeah, I didn't touch the reason why I didn't touch it because there wasn't a villain in there. That's how you pull me in. Give me a Christopher Walken villain. You know, it was the exact I same map. Even like, it was literally the same map. Yeah. I never played Far Cry because I was never that intrigued. Mm. Like, true. There if was it's... nothing that really drew me in. Mm. <laughs> So what type of games do draw you in? Like, if Far Cry, if Far Cry was to draw you in, like, what what should it have in it? You know, other than like a cool ass villain. You know, coming from like a outside you know perspective of somebody who doesn't who never played the Far Cry game. All right. So the games that I do play are all the Batman stuff now. Those things have been amazing. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, huge fan of Skyrim. Um, really, what got me into gaming on a console was Halo. Of course. Before, before that, I was a Command and Conquer, Age of Empires type guy. Mm-hmm. The struggle is real. I understand. We got same origins, different turnout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that, okay. It's games just don't speak to me the same way now. Well, I mean, with the twenty-seven releases of Skyrim, they have you back there. So I'm saying, like, Skyrim got them, and I think that's one thing we can. Definitely... Oh yeah, I mean, like, I'm I'm still playing Skyrim now. Like, <laughs> like yeah, that's... Skyrim is, was amazing. No one's arguing with that. Like, so no one. That's a defining term for across the board for a lot of people, for sure. Yeah, yeah, we we're not we're not compare we we can't compare everything to Skyrim. <sighs> well. If you're if you're Kotaku, then <laughs> that's like the main thing that they do. I remember back in the day when it was like, "Hey, this game, it's not Skyrim," or like IGN was pretty much the same deal. But like, oh man, like, yeah, it's 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 different strokes for different folks, you know. Just like, well, it's all about the the mods of Skyrim right now. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. They just have a huge ass library. Maybe that's what's wrong with the Far Cry series so far. Not a huge modded community that's going off of the game, you know. Honestly, some of the Far Cry mods are actually really good. The only problem that they have is it's so simplistic, and you can get the experience so quickly, and then it just repeats itself over and over again. I feel like I'm in purgatory. <laughs> Over and over again. <laughs> Jesus I mean, that's Christ. how Far Cry feels to me. Like, you do it, you get, like, the same couple, like, 20, 30 minutes of your experience, and then you just do it that again, mm-hmm. and then you do it again, and then you do it again. Yeah, that's pretty much the main complaint about Far Cry 5, and it's, like, a lot of repetition. And it's the same thing for Assassin's Creed, but, like, in the deeper level. Like, nobody cares about, like, going to modern times or whatever. You know, just let no, me. I hate Assassin's Creed. Yeah, this... like, I hate Assassin's Creed. Just like, dude, let me be a pirate for like the whole game. I don't care about f- talking to this engineer fixing my desk or what. I don't give a fuck about that. <laughs> let me be Edward Kenway and let me just go to these islands and fuck shit up. You know what I'm saying? When they like, do, do... Ugh, so so now, dumb. If, like even even with this open world, I am still bored with Assassin's Creed. Like. As good as it can get, like all of this stuff. Like, no, mm. like, I want, I want like a real open world. True, true, and that's what a lot of these games are feeling like. They're not truly hitting that mark of a real open world, and I think that yeah. that and sandbox games have the same problem. That, right, yeah. I agree with you. Like, mm. no one is giving you like a real open world. Yeah. You gotta play like these missions here. Yeah, you can have like all the missions you want, mm-hmm. but they're still these same missions, and half of them are boring as shit. <laughs> the best stories you have in open world is still The Witcher Three, whether or not you played it, or whether or not you enjoyed the combat or not. But they still did the best world building that is ever done in the gaming <laughs> he he so remembers good. he remembers from the last po- last podcast when i was like i hated oh, the yeah. combat and fucking the witcher 3 <laughs> but everything else everything else is cool i just oh, god yeah but like yo yeah I, I played the dlcs for like um what was it? the dlc was like blood wine or something like that um for witcher 3 uh i can't remember but it was, it was really blood good wine. blood and wine yeah there we go blood and wine it's really good and like when you can take something like I had a conversation with a friend of mine I mean, and we Blood were t- and wine might as well be a whole new game it was it was a it, all it, inclusive. Is sick. it had a whole storyline that gets wrapped up and everything it's so good mm-hmm. I mean honestly that game is so fucking good if you don't feel like the combat I don't blame you 
but still the story is so good just power through it god damn it's so good <laughs> i feel like i'm talking to a girl at the bar right now <laughs> so good so good you he, he was struggling with that mic, man. I, <laughs> I, can, I can tell. But yeah, that's a good example that I have. True, true. <laughs> so, I mean, so the bad example I have, like, Just Cause 2. Mm -hmm. You remember how, like, that was the biggest world ever? It was supposed to be a, like, sandbox dream. Yeah. And it was just one formula after another. Yeah. Like, they... Like, wherever you went, it was the same formula. Yeah. Like, like, you could go everywhere, travel everywhere. The biggest map ever in in this get, type of game. Yeah. And you just went to one place, it was this formula. Went to this place, it was That's that formula. That's the Just Cause formula. Yeah. Three did the same thing. All right, well, yeah. I have a question to pose to you guys. Do you think that AAA companies now don't have the ability to innovate as far as the gaming design world? I think mm. the ability is there. You look at Bethesda, look at Skyrim. There is the ability to make innovation. Back, uh, back Skyrim at Skyrim? the entire landscape when it came but, out. But you're talking about old stuff, like recently. Like, is there anything these AAA companies are doing I mean, you look at that are Project turning Red, They expand on the Skyrim formula. They, I mean... The, the, the ability is there. The dedication has to be there as well. Uh, I'm looking at Cybertruck 2077. Like, that game could be the next yes, big RPG. I'm, I'm excited about that one. Most mm, mm. Favorite genre ever, Cyberpunk. We're talking about modern games, yo. Let's talk about Morrowind. Oh, man. Morrowind. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Have we ever seen a game like that before? Ah, oh, dude. Like... Like, right. fuck medieval times, right? It's all about giant mushrooms and, like, crabs and shit, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. But what else is discussing? I don't think played uh, Morrowind. He played <laughs> I played Oblivion. that before my time. Oh, true, true, <laughs> true, true saying, I don't think he played Morrowind. He only played Oblivion. Yeah, I think a lot of people are into those games. And I feel like, um... Like, what me and my friend were discussing before is about... When you play open-world games... You want your actions to affect the world within the game itself and not just to be another mission. You kind of want to see Yeah, you kind of want to see like a permanent change within you the see world. A permanent impact yeah. that everything you're doing is literally changing the landscape. True, true. Pancho, how do you feel about this, man? Uh, I'm playing Oblivion literally right now, so. <laughs> <laughs> um I, I think there's definitely room. Are you there. loving it? Because it's so around. good. <laughs> Oblivion is like literally my top five favorite games of all time. Yeah, I remember but, back in like high school, you used to play that shit a lot. Yeah, I like Oblivion more than Skyrim. That's just me, though. Yeah. I don't blame you for that. It's great. <laughs> um, I think Back in high school, I played a lot of Halo. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Continue, uh, Pancho. <laughs> I, I, think there's, I think there's still room for innovation in terms of games. I think... What we're gonna see in terms of innovation is uh, when it when we jumped from like PS2 from like PlayStation One to PS2, that was like the biggest like graphical jump I think we've seen. I think we've gotten like big graphical jumps out of the way. And then yeah. in terms of like what a game can do in terms of an open world, when we went from PS2 and to PS3, that was a huge jump. Mm -hmm. And I think. Um, I think we're in this space right now because PS3 and 360 to PS4 and Xbox One isn't that huge of a jump, to be honest. I think what we're going to be seeing a lot of is in terms of what these different AI systems can be capable of later, yeah. where we could, we could definitely be seeing something that's what you guys were describing, where your action could indefinitely uh, result in something happening that's specifically tailored to your playthrough. Like, um, when Peter Molyneux first described his version of Fable, <laughs> that never yes. came Oh, out. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to talk about Lionhead and what... Dude, like, that was everything I ever wanted from a game. Is... Yeah, I, th I think the next big innovation we're going to see in terms of... The promise was there on Lionhead. The promise yeah. was there. Fucking... <laughs> 
Peter Molyneux. Never, never happened. All right, yeah. continue, we Poncho. Continue. Well, so we wanted this to for sure. <laughs> Yo, Poncho, continue. What were you saying? Yeah, I I think that's gonna be the the next big innovation, like creating engines and systems to the point where everybody, every AI in the game will remember the shit you do, and it will affect the game. And games will have I, like incredibly huge so. branching paths in turn like even more so than now. Yeah. Like um But when I, will we see it? I don't know. That I, sounds amazing. I hope it happens. I think probably it, I'd be safe to say if not next generation then the generation after that. I would imagine. Well, well do you guys think there's gonna be any big innovations for E three this year? Um I don't know, man. I, I think a lot of people are banking on what Project Scorpio is going to do, but whenever it comes to this, <laughs> whenever it comes to like uh, one company trying to like, when it, whenever it comes to like Microsoft and Sony trying to like outperform each other in terms of hardware, like it doesn't it doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, like third party third parties will make up for most of the console sales and if you, if one console is way more powerful than the other like it doesn't really matter because the third party is going to have to optimize the the game to run on the base console anyway so right. <laughs> if you're looking at like strict uh, like pretty uh, much dude pretty much ai technology microsoft usually wins like they oh, usually yeah. bring out the big tech demos and stuff that doesn't necessarily matter but they show it I mean, if you go back to, you know, the recent huge technology jump that Microsoft had, you know, for their E3 conference, you know, TV, sports, TV, TV, um, it was just not that great. They need to come out swinging this E3, you know what I'm saying? Like, their exclusives were not that high compared to That's PS4s. So and the like, line heads closed. Yeah. They were actually one of the biggest innovators in the world of AI that's ever existed. It was really shocking that they shut that entire studio down because they were had some of the best advanced AI that existed in gaming, and now they're closed. Yeah, man, and they've been shutting down a lot of games, like Scalebound and... Crackdown three. I hear Scalebound's like, coming back. I don't know. They it's, said it's, it was. They said it was shut down, but it might be coming back. I don't it, know. It's it's by a different company though. Platinum's kind of right. Yeah, it's not Platinum. Yeah. So it's not Scalebound anymore. It's 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 bound. It's it's something else. It's it's You're like absolutely right. You're absolutely yeah, right. Yeah. Like if it's not like I, I can't believe in that. Like like usually when you see something canceled like that. The, the company keeps that IP and then they hold on to it for like 20 years until somebody makes something out of it, a.k.a. Prey. So it's like, <laughs> so it's like, you know, I, I don't know what that's going to come out of. But, well, um, the new Prey game is great. But it's uh, but it's <laughs> but it's not a prey game. You, you, no, it yeah. has nothing to do with the original yeah. prey. Whatever, it's a System Shock sequel, like a spiritual successor to System Shock. Is yeah. what it is. but it's great. Yeah, System Shock. Aren't they making a remake to System they, Shock? They are making a HD remake of System Shock. Yeah, absolutely. They had a demo on GOG. You can download it. They are literally the creators are making are remaking it in HD. Yep. I never played that game before, so I'm gonna have to try it out. Oh, if you never played it, you absolutely should. It it's the game that brought apart like Bioshock, uh, Deus Ex, any yeah. of these like sci-fi, like uh, dystopian cyberpunk things was all derivative of system shock so you should definitely play it i'll, I'll give it a, I'll, I'll definitely check it out yeah i'll give it a try as well because I, I i still have to play some of like the old pc games and i never really had a chance of like you like, might play shit your playing. pants but it's gonna get <laughs> i have more control than that but we'll see about that <laughs> We shall see. I'm not. I'm not up in my fifties yet, so we'll see. Yeah, Sizzle Shock is one of the best, like the first, like real horror PC games, and it's so good. That's been the catchphrase of this podcast, pretty much. So we're gonna move on to the next game, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Kingdom Hearts Three plan in the next few years. Oh, we heard that before. No, they're saying next year. Oh, next year. 2018. Okay. Big question is why. Okay. Yeah, exactly that. Well, well they've been on like the 
stuff series for Kingdom Hearts. They they need to like wrap it up at some point. I mean, Kingdom Hearts is one thing, but the Final Fantasy VII just like honestly, if you're gonna remake it, let's just get it done. Honestly, <laughs> are we still gonna like keep going with turn based? No, they're no, going with no. action. They are yeah. abandoning the turn base, which is yeah. the, the biggest betrayal, <laughs> in my opinion. I'm with you there, Mark. Like, I understand it's a remake 3D. We talked about this graphics, last time. So we, yeah. we sure did, so we should not talk about this again, <laughs> or it's going to take another 30 minutes of our time <laughs> of pure salt, so let's not do this. All right, well, as far as I know, Final Fantasy VII, they're pretty much... It is not time based We got to deal with it, unfortunately. I'm going to fucking and... delete you from this Discord. I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> And it's separated, mm -hmm. like it's supposed to be like one episodic. Beat per yeah. Disc. Mm -hmm. It's so, gonna be actual episodic, yeah. yeah. Alright, so what's next? Let, let's move on to Final Fantasy VII. Everyone knows about Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> I love it, but we can go all night. Yeah, pretty uh, much. I'm, pretty I'm much. interested in saying what they have to do with it. I'm interested to see new information. Yeah, yeah. Even though there's not turn based, I still want to know what they're doing. I still want to see more. True. And I'm true. excited to see what they have to say out of E3. True, true. Well, we'll, I, we'll, I, we'll, I hope we don't have to take pictures in the game. Like yeah. that's the stupid mechanic. Like what the fuck? <laughs> if they if they abandon the turn base, I might actually play it. Oh, oh it hurts me inside, man. Oh, <laughs> listen, listen, guys. We have we have new guests that are in here, so I want to hear from J Pike and Poncho. But first, J Pike, go ahead. What do you? What is your opinion? Since you throw out that nice burn right there, fuck turn base. <laughs> Get it out of here. What is I your have, opinion? I have never liked turn base games. Like, I've been playing games since the only option was turn-based games and it's always annoyed me as soon as turn-based games went away I loved it <laughs> I want like instant interaction That's... I don't want to see my, I want my character instantly interacting going out and doing these things mm, that, that is true yeah, tell us how you really feel real deep. Go ahead, I mean, I don't, I, I don't disagree. I understand the point of view, but I, I mean, the, the entire complexity of the old Final Fantasy VII, the entire system which which the game works around, is that you have these turns and you have this whole complex combat system, and like it's hard to translate otherwise. And if they do it well, awesome, I'm in. But if they don't do it well, it's going to be very disappointing. I would rather see them do the exact same active time battles than try to translate it into something else. Like, spend your resources elsewhere. You know, try to up the fidelity, then try to change the battle system. You know, kind of in a way, I feel like they're trying to make Final Fantasy VII into Final Fantasy VIII. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I guess. I mean... Listen, they're, I'm they're trying to make the story like I'm, I'm personally a fan of Final Fantasy VIII as far as story wise. So I feel like they're trying to make the Final Fantasy VII story as compelling as eight. But since everyone's, well, most people's first Final Fantasy is seven, mm -hmm. that's they're just kind of taking advantage of that. You think so, huh? Okay, Pancho, what do you think about the Final Fantasy? Uh. I will tell you that if that thing comes out in 2008, 2018, the first episode will come out in November 24th, 2018, the last possible moment of 2018. Mm -hmm. then they'll probably milk the rest of those episodes till 2019. Uh, and then in 2025, they'll announce the other remake where it's actually turned. <laughs> they, they, I they'll, they'll just keep on making them. I'm surprised that No More still has a job. Like this man has been doing this series for like damn near a decade, so he needs to hurry the fuck up. Like, I mean, <laughs> showing Square, they're gonna drag it out. Just I'll, I'll, take, I'll take Skyrim Combat over any Final Fantasy Combat. And that's saying something because. Ugh. 
I mean, that's the, that's the difference in RPGs. I mean, that's the Western RPG versus the Eastern RPG. That's a, a good point. See, my battle with Final Fantasy VII was going through those motherfucking menus. Like, Jesus Christ, man. Like, you literally had to memorize where the fuck you... Like, what you wanted to do. How fast you had to get there. Like, that was my struggle when I was a kid. You, know, I was a kid. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's a lot of... I feel you on that. I just wish they would take that same system... And then streamline it, and then make it into a, like a cinematic experience, which looks like what they're trying to do. But no, really. like Final Fantasy has the exact same system since I was a kid. They haven't updated their system since I was a kid. He's looking for an update, obviously. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. I mean, fifteen well, was like the latest it's... one. Yeah, play fifteen. Yeah. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. He's not wrong to ask for that. It's just play fifteen or twelve. Well, I'm gonna defend the fact that playing they have the old school. It's a remake of seven. Even, it's a even, remake, so we should do a remake. Even with the old school, like it, it, the fighting system has changed a lot. Like even with the like the original ones, mm -hmm. you can change your character's class. That's something we don't see that much in, in RPGs anymore. Like, in, in the original ones, you had your characters, and each one you can get them to be a different class and use them. Now yeah, all the classes are kind of specialized. -based. So what? I, I play text-based RPGs. Like, where you couldn't change anything, you were just doing these things. Oh my god, you are- like, you, you... I dreamed about, like, real-time combat in this sense of, like, an RPG. Oh And god. then, like, Final, Final Fantasy Text let me down over and over and over again. If you were looking for something other than the turn-based system, yes. But if the turn-based system was everything you wanted, then Final Fantasy delivered 110% more so than any other system ever did. And I would love to see them be confident in that system because Final Fantasy VII was one of the best selling games that ever existed for a reason because it holds up because the system was great. And I would love to see them support that system. See, That's my argument. You see what you do here is you go on Steam and you buy Final Fantasy 15, uh, excuse me, 7. <laughs> Sorry. You buy it because you can't. I mean, can't, you remember that on the different yeah. sides. We can talk about it all night, so we yeah. can move on. Mm -hmm. We can definitely uh, move on. Now my brother and I are going to be in an argument for the rest of the night. Thanks, bro. <laughs> hey, you can continue that anytime. What I'm saying is go ahead and buy Final Fantasy 7 on Steam. Go ahead and get the latest mods for it. Get that, that texture map. Get if the new characters. If they mods, holy shit, it'll be so much better. No, oh, they oh, actually yeah. do. They actually do. Uh, you can get the latest ones. They have like the ruby weapons, the omega weapons, all updated. Oh, then phenomenal. I'm yeah. in. There you go. That's your solution <laughs> right now until something else comes out because you're definitely not getting turn based. Not for a I, long time. I know. It hurts me inside. But I, I'm, I've made my peace already. But I understand my argument and I want to argue it forever. But yeah, I get it. I understand what they're doing. I get it and it makes sense. True, true. All right, guys. So. Moving on to the last topic before we say our final thoughts. We have two new guests here today. We have Jay Pike and we have Poncho from Pan Cheesy Games. Poncho, what are your predictions for E3? I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave Loveless from Wild Wild West picture up here. <laughs> this man is beautiful. What is your E3 predictions? Uh what can I say? I'm gonna give you I... ten minutes. Oh shit. God. Probably less. Probably less than that. that probably that's five. That's a lot. Uh, five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five. I think. I think E3 is going to come out Sony and Nintendo like super strong. I hmm. think Microsoft, unless they unless they really blow us out of the water with Scorpio, I think they're probably going to be probably in last place, mm -hmm. which sucks because I, I like I like uh, my Xbox more than my PS4, uh, but like the more and more I see. Like Microsoft taking these bells lately, man. Like with Scalebound, Phantom Dust last year. Like mm -hmm. all this crazy stuff is like nuts. It's I don't know. It's it's really weird. I think Nintendo is going to. Um, I don't I, I don't want to say win, 
but like I feel like a lot of people are going to be talking about Nintendo at the end of E3 it, whether they want to invest in that or not but I think it's going to be really hard to avoid all the news coming out of Nintendo whether it be like well I heard it what's up no, I heard that Nintendo's bringing out another DS do you think there's really a point and bringing out another DS when you have the Switch, which is supposed to be, like, taking over both the console and handheld? Yeah, to, uh, I'll, I'll touch on that, I guess, for a second. Like, um, the thing about the, the 2DS XL, like, it makes perfect sense to bring that out because that's, like, the last bit. That's the last hardware revision before they legacy the line of 3DS. Okay. Like, um, the same thing happened with, like, the Game Boy, the Game Boy, the Game Boy Micro. Like, Game Boy Micro came out two years after the DS came out. Uh, but, but that didn't mean that they were forgetting about the DS. The DS went on to, like, be, like, a literal money-printing machine. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think, in, for what the 2DS XL is, it's literally just an extremely smart business move in terms of, right now, 3DS parts are the cheapest they are ever going to be to manufacture. And they might as well capitalize that uh, in terms of making a hardware revision for the 3DS that's cheap to manufacture, looks good, and um, people will buy. Like it's super cool. Like the 3DS, the 3DS library is already huge. Yeah, it's too um, big. Yeah, but they they can easily integrate that with the Switch. That's what I'm saying. Like it's just a money dump because they're afraid of people not switching over to the Switch. Well, I mean, I, I want to say as far as that, I would say, like, the reason they're doing the 2DS XL is because it's it's more it's more of, like, a send-off to that that line, like, the 3DS line, or the, D, the DS and the 3DS line. Um, just because they're putting out a new, like, hard, just because they're doing, like, a hardware revision for the system, I don't think that really says that they're going to that they're like forgetting about the switch i think that's just like the last thing they're already doing they're saying like yo guess what you know we already have this huge back catalog and back library of games that we've made over the last like seven eight years here's one last piece of hardware that you can buy um and play all these great games we already have uh while you go ahead and get ready for the future we have with the they switch. just have to be able to commit to deporting them true true all right, yeah, so I, I, I thought that you could play a lot of these games on the Switch. No, you can't. Like, for like, sure, you can't. You can't play any DS games on the Switch. Oh, okay. Doesn't have like a cartridge. Is it a cartridge system or is it like your download? It it is a cartridge system, but like it's a completely different like um, format. Which uh, is like super risky. Do it game by game and trying to make it a valuable thing. But then well, they can also do like downloadables in their, like, Nintendo market. They could. They could do that if they're smart, but it's not available yet. Uh, uh, I mean, like, what they'll probably do at E3 in terms of Nintendo, what, what, I think Nintendo will come out strong because at E3 they're, they're more than likely going to announce the virtual console. Uh, they will probably have... They'll probably come out the gate with GameCube virtual console titles. Um, that would be amazing. Yeah, I think that's definitely one of the things that's on their plate. We've already seen that a lot of like copyrights and a lot of trademarks for GameCube titles have been updated, and a lot of ESRB ratings have been updated um, for like new 2017 and 2018 revisions. So it's a lot of strong evidence that GameCube will be heavily supported on Virtual Console. It took them um, so long to do that. Where was that for the Wii U? Ugh. Yeah. I think, I think they knew that. I don't know. I think they knew that the Wii U was like done in the water. <laughs> yeah, I felt. Yeah, it, it was like even though I love the Wii U and like how some games actually took advantage of like how to make it work with the gamepad, I felt like it was just a prototype. It was just yeah. like something to yeah. test the waters out there, have some loyalty with the fans, and like okay. Now this is the real shit. Like Switch, here you go. Like this is yeah. this is what we've been working on for the whole time. So, yeah. I think, I think we're gonna see a cool virtual console. I think we're probably gonna get a, a Super Smash Brothers Deluxe. Of course. Oh, uh, yeah. I think Super Smash Brothers is definitely happening. 
Yeah, I think we're going to see a lot of, like, deluxe titles or a lot of, like, Wii U ports. And maybe, <coughs> and, like, a new IP or two. Splatoon, kind of... obviously, is coming soon. <laughs> yeah, like... 100% that's <laughs> happening. Yeah, let him finish, let him finish. Go ahead. Yeah, we'll Sorry. Say, right, I don't mean to interrupt you. So it soon comes out this year. It's super soon. It's like August, I think. Um, I think we're going to see a lot of, like, transitional titles from Nintendo in terms of stuff that we've already seen on the Wii U. Um, but they're going to announce, like, a couple of great IPs that are going to come in the future. And I think that's what a lot of people are going to be interested in. Uh, Sony, I think, is definitely going to talk about God of War. They're going to talk about the Uncharted expansion and stuff like that. Maybe they might touch on Last of Us 2. Um, they'll probably talk about Days Gone as well. Will they announce a new console because of Scorpio, or will they just no, no, no. Oh, he said that in the beginning. SPS Four Pro. I don't know. Like the no way. The Scorpio is the answer <laughs> to PS Four Pro. Yeah, so, pretty much. Okay, um, but pretty recently they've there's been like stupid clickbait articles about how powerful the the Scorpio is like it's a whole new console generation which brings me back to what I was saying earlier I, I think it's like really dumb to fragment the market like that especially when a big part of your market is third party yep. yeah. um, it just doesn't make sense to make to make third parties work two different types of like have two different development teams for uh, all that stuff that's, that's exactly why the Wii U never got any third party support because it wasn't worth the company's time to split their development team in half to work on two different systems. There. Exactly, because they literally had to downgrade everything to fit that uh, that uh, infrastructure for Wii U yeah. because it was way too slow. So yeah. so when do you guys think uh, console uh, will be the, the end for consoles? Or do you think consoles will remain forever? Because at this point, it feels like everyone's competing to see who can build the better computer. I think... Um... I think at the end of the day there will be there won't be three anymore there'll be two and I think it's uh, I think it's probably always going to be Nintendo in some in some form Nintendo will be still in the home console market but I think like if Microsoft keeps on going the way they're going I think they're just going to merge their console and computer market together mm -hmm. and well, that's start They'll start selling computers, like period, like gaming computers. Well, they're they, they're already starting doing that with their like surface line of computers. Like this is their first um, dedicated hardware apart from the Xbox series, and they've been like I said earlier, like the Windows 10 is supposed to be uh, the OS for every single platform: phone, computer, yeah. tablet, console, same exact operating system. It just changes the format depending on what you're doing at the time. Don't mean yeah. shit if you don't have any games for it, so... Yeah, exactly. I think, like, all Microsoft... Like Microsoft, they have, like, Halo and Gears of War. I think Gears of War, at this point in time, is a little played out. Yeah, it is. Um, the story's uh, pretty much finished at this point. Yeah, it, it was weird. Gears 4 was okay. Okay. Alright. Uh, Halo 5 was dog shit. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. All right. Uh, Honestly, I stopped playing Halo after two. All right, so we're gonna. I mean, as a PC gamer, I think the idea of cross buy is phenomenal. Like, like All right. if All right. I was gonna take a second and if I was looking at a game that mm -hmm. I would never play, even mm -hmm. so, like if it's on my TV, you know, like I have a home theater PC, maybe, and then yeah, I'm gonna play it for no. No other reason than yeah, I can. But if I buy it, it's on my computer and it's on my PC. It's a whole different story. I think they're making good strides. Either either way, I think Microsoft is making good moves, and I'm excited to see what they do next. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, J Pike, man, what is your predictions for E3? He may not have any more. He just walked away. <laughs> I think he's. I think he's down for the count. I was. I was trying to save him some time. He was, he was here. He walked away. I don't. I don't know what to say. All right. Cool. Cool. All right. So we pretty much have our predictions. You know, we'll see what Microsoft is definitely gonna have to bring it because everybody else is kicking it out of uh -huh. the park. You know. So. Am I still? Am I still alive? 
Yeah, you're, you're in. Oh, there I am. Oh, man. All right. My girlfriend was calling me. Oh, that's <laughs> cool. That's cool, man. So what are your predictions for E3? <laughs> Just keep I it short. I think it's going to be all about... They're going to push VR like nuts. And oh. they're not... They're still not going to have anything to back it up with. <laughs> they're going to push VR all over the place. And it's gonna annoy the living shit out of me. <laughs> I agree, cause like so they're pushing it without validation. So I could see that. I could. I'm absolutely okay with seeing that. That's very possible. I, like I'm not gonna lie. Like I've seen VR. Like I, I, the Samsung VR stuff is way better than I thought it could possibly be. It still sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not and VR. Yeah, yeah. Samsung VR is like the, the lowest possible. But thing. everyone else is going to keep pushing it on. <laughs> yeah, pretty much I the think lowest that, possible. I think Microsoft is going to have a deal with Vive or Oculus. So, like, yeah, I think that's going to be a big focus, potentially. Yeah, so, I, can see Microsoft I don't disagree whatsoever on that. Well, yeah. considering that last year Microsoft's big thing was HoloLens, I I'm personally hope that they bring something up as far as the HoloLens for E3. Because... The only reason to have a PS4 Pro is so that you can do the VR. Everything else doesn't matter. Like, that's literally the only reason they have the PS4 Pro. And now the Scorpio, which you guys said is supposed to be competing with the PS4 Pro, is the, is the Scorpio going to be competing with the whole VR format? Are they going to go all gung-ho with the whole HoloLens and AR format? Or... I think they're going to have to push the VR perspective, or they're going to have to push performance. They're going to have to be like, hey, everything's going to be at 60 frames per second, or it's going to be, hey, there's a good VR performance. One or the other. It's going to be like, hey, like we got this big game that's going to be awesome in VR, or it's going to be, hey, we got all these games that are all going to be 60 frames per second. Like, one or the other. Yeah, they're going to have to pick one, and I'm not sure what they're going to do. I might. I don't even think it's performance at this way, at this point. I think Microsoft is either gonna have to like come up with some kind of new IP or something, or like Hololens or something. But performance-wise, dude, like they're Microsoft and Sony are making deals left and right with all the component companies. They already have performance-wise covered. Like well, Microsoft it's not that hard. Number one, they're about to be absolute number one. So they might as well start making deals now, because they're gonna have the best system on the market. Whether or not okay. it's whether or not people buy it or not, they should at least be making deals to like have games exploited. Well, until we get to like consumer-based quantum computing, at this You're point, right. we're, we're, we're at this point with computers, we're circle jerk. Like seriously, Cir with computers with consoles, it's like. What they're doing is, oh, let's get all these cheap computer parts and make it enhance just yeah, I'm so for PC games. Race that I have to say that PC is so much better. It is. It is. And when is console going to die? Is there a place for console? Or is there going to be a place? They're not dying. Yeah, they're not dying. I think the Scorpio is uh, a big, big step forward because it's going to be basically a big Windows 10 PC. It's going to run on the same operating system. That's the whole idea. And they're gonna play the same games. You're gonna have some uh, good old uh, whatever the fucking word is. I can't even think about. It. But the whole thing is like it's gonna have at that point par parody about... is the word. We're gonna have parody between the two. Uh, so at it's that point, interesting I'd to buy see a the computer, two. Dude. Like yeah. I'd rather buy a computer. Yeah, I don't. Point. I don't disagree, but I think it's a good step forward to have parody between the two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll 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 get there at some point. Poncho, what do you think? About oh, it? for sure. Yeah, we're not think, there uh, yet, but it's interesting to see parity between the two. Hold on, early. hold on, hold on. Let Pancho finish. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think eventually we'll get there. But like I said, I feel like um, in terms of like uh, consume, like yeah, fuck the you, bro. normal consumer, <laughs> uh, like. Did, did we lose Pancho? Uh, we have a poncho down, poncho down. 
I think he's down. I think his microphone cut off by accident. Well, he said he was using his phone, so he, he, his signal might have I been understand the issues. <laughs> true, true, true. I'll, we'll wait for him to come back. Um, all right, well, guys. Until then. Oh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to keep this short because uh, our time is running out here. Final but, uh, words. Our final thoughts, basically, uh, my, mine are basically. I hope E3 <laughs> is really exciting. I want to see some new stuff. I want to see some new IPs from Microsoft, some new IPs or like continuation for what's going on with Sony, because they brought the hype two years ago, and now we're still following that hype years later with like Final yep. Fantasy and the Kingdom Hearts and you know uh, Shenmue and all that stuff. less actual IP than Microsoft had the same year. Yeah. So it's just like, like you know uh, with all the cancellations of games from Microsoft there's, there's gonna they're gonna have to bring something because after a while people are not gonna give a fuck about them. No you're absolutely right. They, yeah. they need something big. You're right. And also Nintendo. Nintendo needs to have more games for the Switch because they can't Zelda can't be there forever. Mario Kart exactly. is just an update, you know, and like... And like they arms, need to arms. port Pokemon to <laughs> the Switch. Honestly, that would entirely change their fortunes overnight. They just port the same Pokemon game into Switch. Or They're just done. have like a, a like a new Pokemon game. That'd be Switch. great too, but like even if they just port the last one, everybody would be happy and we're good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, well... Uh, no man, any final words before we go? Keep it short. Uh, dude, um, I'm hoping they do something different this year. Uh, it's probably gonna be interesting since, like I've said it in the last show, uh, it's first year that there's gonna, the E3's gonna be open to the public. So, there's probably some shit's gonna happen. I'm not, I don't wanna say it's gonna be some bad shit, but... When, when the public's open to stuff that hasn't been previewed for a while, shit happens. Other than that, uh, and I really hope that these companies have something innovative and they're not just relying on their IPs. Like, that, that's the only thing I'm worried about. And with like VR, VR has its place, that's coming. If you want to go into VR, I suggest people PC Master Race, like most mm -hmm. Um Other than that, no, I don't really have much to say. Like, uh, I really hope that this industry tries to become a little bit more diverse, especially of genres. Like, stop using the same tropes all the time, or mix up some of the tropes. Like. Give give me a little bit more variety. I'm tired of these World War Two games, World War One, like FPSs. Like, give me something different. Fighting games, give me something different. I'm, I'm playing Quake play Champions with you, brother. Let's do it. Yeah, like we we need something different. Cool. Especially if, if before we get to the VR era, which I know everyone's concentrating on VR right now and AR and stuff like that. And everyone's using the same tropes and the same genres and stuff. But before we get to the point where everyone has VR, there needs to be some new kind of genre, new kind of innovation as far as gameplay. Okay, okay. Well, that is that is viable. And uh, yeah, man, that, that's very important. Like, that, there needs to be some kind of breakthrough for this to actually be a success. And that's the most important key nowadays because everybody's doing the same thing. I think we have Poncho back. I don't know if he's there or not. Poncho, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. What are your final thoughts? And then we'll move on to Mark afterwards. Final thoughts in terms of E3? Uh, E3, everything that we discussed pretty much. Like, what... what... Or shout outs or anything, yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, I think E3 was interesting, just like you said earlier. Um, first year they're open to the public, so... <laughs> I think, um, I think, I mean, there's what? Gonna be a lot of demos. <laughs> there's going to be a lot of demos on the floor. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think there's going to be a lot of, like, like, I'm going to be smoking mirrors, but there's going to be a lot of, like, uh, 
a lot of stuff is going to appease to the public and the public only. Just because it's the first year it's open, they want to make it like huge and flashy and whatever. Mm -hmm. So I think there's there's going to uh, be a oh, lot yeah. of like flash, but not a lot of stuff. Since I don't think so. It's super important to mention that for sure. Yeah, because those demos and like I feel like since everybody's kind of pulling out of E3, you know what I'm saying? Like Nintendo kind of like pulled their main like conference out of um, E3, but they still have like their treehouse event and stuff, you know? Yeah, everyone's but, going for their own specific conferences. Mm -hmm. It's very They're interesting. Well, it's interesting to ex in, like, extrapolate Nintendo stuff. itself. Because they're doing things very differently, yeah. Yeah, what were you saying, Pancho? And yeah, they are doing something differently, Mark. Yeah, I, I said, well, Nintendo, like, hasn't oh, had a, hasn't had a yeah. conference in, like, forever. Am I still muted, or no? No, you're good. I hear um, um, Yeah, but Nintendo hasn't had a conference in five years or something. Like a like a normal conference with, in front of a live audience and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think the last, the last time they had a conference was when uh, Miyamoto demoed Skyward Sword, and, like, it, like messed up because of all the interference and stuff like that and i think that's the year they were all like yeah we can't do this anymore <laughs> we gotta we gotta pre-record something or something yeah um, wait quick 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 question i'm sorry to interrupt but it's something that i was gonna bring up during my final words but i want to hear your opinion kojima e3 sure. this year what do you good think question. good i think question. he will reveal himself no question mm. um, I think he'll be there. I think they're. I think we're gonna see a lot of Death Stranding at this this C three. I think um, it's obviously gonna be at um, Sony's event. Uh, I don't yeah. know. Hopefully, we'll figure out what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who knows what the fuck that is? Like. Yeah. We won't know until a year after the game is out what that shit is actually about. So. <laughs> um, Wikis. Yeah. I. I think it'll be cool to see what Kojima's been up to. He's been assembling like a crazy team for his uh, for his uh, development studio. So hopefully they bring something to the table that um, proves why he like shows why he needs all those crazy people. True, like, true. And uh, uh, going back to the Nintendo thing before we move on to Mark, what do you think Nintendo needs to bring out? I think Nintendo just needs to really stick to, I, like to hear it. I think they need to switch, uh, stick to the Switch, honestly. Um, it's already doing, like, crazy numbers. People want this system. Yeah, sw Switch 2.0 with Gorilla Glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, they just need to, like, show everybody that they're working on great software for the Switch. Um, bring Virtual Console to it. And just let people know that this is the system they're moving forward with. It's not going to be another Wii U. Um, and that they just want to get people excited. I, I think I heard that um, Mario Odyssey is going to be a huge focus in terms of Nintendo. I think it's going to be playable on the floor, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's really cool. Like, great, solid first party IPs from Nintendo is what they need to bring out. If they. There's like whispers going around that they might reboot uh, Metroid again, and but like more like more realistic and more like nuts and crazy, um, which would be super cool. Um, I don't know. I just think Nintendo just needs to stick to what they do best, uh, staying in their own lane, and just delivering on stuff <laughs> people like Nintendo for. Yeah. Um, All right. Pokemon Stars. I think Pokemon Stars would be there for sure. Whether or not it's on the Switch, I don't know. I think it would be uh, <clears throat> a huge opportunity to put it on the Switch instead of the DS, but I could also see them backpedaling and putting on the DS just because the install base is already so huge. And they want to sell software on the, the biggest install base possible, which is the 3DS right now. But True. It could also be another great way to get more Switches out there. That is, uh, well... That is the main primary focus. All right, Mark, go ahead and lay it down for us, my man. Uh, E3, your final thoughts? Like, what, what What do you got to say? I got a lot to say. Um, I differ from my brother. He's probably not going to make a statement here. He's doing his own thing now. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're together. Um, it was interesting to hear his point of view. Uh, he 
differs for me in a lot of points. Uh, I love the open world setting as long as it's done correctly. Uh, I mean, he played upset like uh, uh, he he played uh, Skyrim hardcore, and he, before that he played uh, uh, he played other other scrolls. But then, like it it changed the entire game. I'm interested to see the evolution of the game. Bethesda did a lot of things with Fallout 4. I'm interested to see what they have to say with potentially their future IPs. Mm -hmm. They've been very secretive what they're talking about. Uh, I'm interested to see what they have to say. And then Rockstar, obviously, is now delayed uh, Red Dead, which yeah. is going to be interesting to see where they take that because I don't know if we're going to see it at all at E3 now that, it, that, that it's delayed. Hopefully they so take like, it to I'm, PC. Yeah, if they take it to PC as well, I think they're going to. I think that's going to be like a, a thing. I think it's going to be maybe simultaneous, maybe a later release date for PC. Either way, I think it's, it has to be PC now. I feel like we we are in a world where that has to happen. Well, like, there's so many... Like, I could the, be wrong. The PC community has embraced GTA so much. I think Rockstar has to invest in PC yeah, that's, versions. That's, that's where I'm working at. I, I still play today. GTA with some of my friends with a bunch of mods and stuff. And we still play it, and it's so much fun. I think uh, Red Dead has to be a PC game at this point. And I think that might be part of why it's delayed. I don't know. But either way, we're going to see something. Whether or not it's like the delay, we're going to... I want to see some good footage of Red Dead, but I don't know that we're going to see it at E3. We're definitely going to get some South Park, which I think is yep. going to be great. I'm so ready for some sure, South Park. Sure. That game looks amazing. Well, it's a fractured butthole or something? Yeah. A fractured butthole. Yeah, it looks phenomenal. That game looks amazing. As well as the new Assassin's Creed. I'm interested. Like, I've, I've played every <laughs> single... I know, I know. I've played every single Assassin's Creed game. And they've all been boring since the second one. But Black Flag was great. I'm interested to see if they have anything innovative to do. They took a year, they took a year off. I'm interested to see it. And see what they have to do with it. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not expecting too many surprises. I'm, but I say that every single E3... And there's always a couple surprises. So, uh, what I'm expecting is pretty iron iron set, and I, I get it. But I, I I'm expecting some surprises, just because there always are some. And I hope they're good ones. That's most of what I have to say about E3. Okay, okay, very informative. My man threw it down. You know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, man, this, these are pretty much our final thoughts. Thank you, gentlemen, for showing up for this podcast. Cheers. It's, been a, it's been a struggle, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Trying to get everything together. It was a it was a pain on my part. <laughs> <laughs> my man had to go through Discord, had to go through his phone with his bro. <laughs> like, like, all I didn't want to talk about it. it was a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it was a whole thing. Thank you, my man Pancho, high school buddy, high school right. you know companion. You know what I'm saying? If you, I'm gonna put up on stream right now. Um, you know his channel is Pancheesy at YouTube.com slash pan cheesy where he does uh multiple videos about um figurines uh the latest consoles his opinions on games all the above he's currently at 5600 subs Woo! Where well, did I have that? yeah that's <laughs> just a big gigantic <laughs> nub that we Gave credit for, for no reason, but yeah, cool. man, I'm still at 220, man. I'm struggling. I, I gotta get, I gotta put up new content, man. I gotta be like this guy right here, man. Uh, I don't even look at my numbers. Yeah, next time. <laughs> so, uh, so, Pacho, like, th thank you for being part of the show. We need to talk some anime though, because that's what uh, I, I kind of wanted to talk about this time. But we don't have time. But yeah, we don't. Some oh. Dragon Ball Super and shit, like. Oh, no question. Like, oh yeah, Pancho's a huge Dragon Ball fan. Like he's. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm a Dragon Ball fan, but not a greater anime fan. Uh, and uh, Naruto, the new Naruto game. Oh, oh yeah, Shinobi it Striker. Fucking it's... amazing, is what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. So yeah. that's, I guess that's for next week if you. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, Mark yeah. And for real. Pancho wants to 
participate. Yeah. Like, most definitely. All right, cool. So we'll we'll leave some space in for uh, some Dragon Ball Super because I'm really liking how that how that uh, arc is going. You know, the latest arc. I, I still need to catch up on some episodes, but boy, boy, these fights yeah. have been sick. Really the, good. Like, <laughs> I, I can't even explain. Like the new Saiyans, like the battle between Gohan and Goku. Like, yeah, uh, I'm just, I can't even. Yo, somebody give props to bringing life to the series now, because it's been a while. It's been a while, but this, <laughs> it, but pretty much, dudes. This is this have you know. This is our final thoughts. Um, glad you guys can show up. For you out there who are watching the stream right now, thank you so much for following the channel. Thank you so and much for bringing the news. Before we end, uh, oh, go we'll ahead. Tournament tomorrow. Uh, some people will know. Just oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's coming. That's coming up. Um. So yeah, the promo, going back to it, tournament tomorrow is what I'm about to go to sleep for because I have to wake up early and set up. Downright Fierce 12, we'll have Injustice 2, Street Fighter 5, Blaze Blue, Pokin, and Tekken Tag Tournament 2. If you're coming by, it's at Commercial Avenue, Charlotte, North Carolina, at Get Some Games. That's the name of the location. We are in the building in the back of, um, back of the lot. Uh, we do have a new AC unit now, so motherfuckers won't be cooking inside that foundation. You know what I'm saying? No more, like, choppy fans or whatever. We have full working ACs, thanks to the owners of the store. And uh, uh, thank you so much for them for supporting the local fighting game uh, community. And, uh, yeah, hi yeah they, they're doing it big right now. So, uh, also, shout-outs to Potions and Pixels for sponsoring us. Frame Zero Gaming for being a partnership, Set Play CLT for helping out newcomers and veterans, and of course my boys here on the podcast for helping a brother out and making this, you know, an interesting conversation to say the least. What's the next uh, Push to the Pixels event? I need, uh, I need to come hang out. It's uh, I believe the first Thursday of every month. Yep. Okay. The first or second yeah. Thursday. Mm-hmm. I will show up. I will officially show up. For sure, next time. Okay. And I got my GoPro too, so we'll, we'll have some on the scene shit if I'm there as well. Okay, so I, I can. Will, s- I'll show up. Okay, sure. I can splice some uh, footage from that GoPro and then add it to like the end of this podcast or like, or in its own separate video, like our adventures through potions and pixels. Yeah, yeah. All right, dude. So this is th- this is it for the podcast. I'll see you dudes later. Thanks for coming out for supporting Pixel Bitch and Podcast. Ain't that a bitch? We'll see you dudes see next you time. Guys, Bye. Cheers. Cheers. See you later. Peace. Peace. All right.